Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the All A7 Podcast Show. Viewer discretion is advised. that winter is over it's getting water and water every day schools have closed and i hope you guys did well in your examinations if you did not do well please do not lose hope just work an extra mile and study because the final examinations are just around the corner it is your genius kids and my name is Tawonga benyuda mugwanyu well known well known as benny and today with me here to grace the show is joyce ndemera who is into chess she's also into basketball and swimming in, in short, we'll be hearing from here, but as always, Genius Kids is here to give you the best of the best. And guess what? Joyce Ndemera is a chess guru who has been to Namibia and did very well at the tournament. Welcome to the show, jo Joyce. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. Are you excited to be here? Yes. Hey, this is, this is not chess. This is just an interview. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just... Um, Tell me, tell me a bit about yourself, who is Joyce, um, how many are you in your family, where do you learn, how old are you, you know, so that everybody can actually get to understand you. Okay, um, as you know, my name is Joyce Ndemia. I'm 13 years old. I go to Lamagandi College in Chinoy. Um, I'm in a family of five and I'm the oldest with two siblings. David parent. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I have two siblings, one brother, one sister. Yeah, I'm into everything, but yeah. Hey, tell me, how does it feel to be, to be a deputy parent? I'm also a deputy parent. <laughs> well, as you know, it's not easy since mm -hmm. they'll be looking up to you. But I feel like I need to do my best so that they can look up to someone who's doing something great. And you know what about being a deputy parent? There's something that I got to understand um, as I'm growing up. Uh, you get to understand your parents better, like whatever that they do. And the siblings, we think that you're trying to be the family manager, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but it's just because you're expecting the best from them, the same way your parents expect the best from them and you as well. Yes. So it's really difficult. So you face challenges here and there. How, is, how, is, how have you been handling the, the challenges actually? Well, um, I first try to understand my siblings so that mm -hmm. if I'm telling them to do something, I'm telling them in a way they don't think is boring or I'm being too bossy. Do they listen? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but not all the time. Yes. But, but tell me, I know you also don't listen to your parents every time, do you? Well, not really. <laughs> no, no, that, that's the thing. Now you're, now you're in your parents' shoes because you also have siblings. You're a deputy parent. Anyway, uh, do you have friends and what do you guys do during your spare time? 
Oh yes, I do. Well, mm. I can say I'm friends with everyone, but I have my close friends, mm. um, like Lorraine, Kazai, Michael, Tendai, and all those. Um, in our spare time, well, we d- I don't learn with all of them. Some mm. of them are like in pedals, but the ones at Gandhi, we like discuss novels together or like go to the basketball courts and play basketball together. We just chill in hostel and talk. You're a basketball player and during your spare time, you go play basketball with your friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering if you actually have uh, social time for yourself. Oh, I do. You do? Yes. You mentioned about uh, discussing books, reading yes. books and all that. Yes. And you guys are just 14. And they're already discussing books, reading a lot of books. Some of us started reading books when we were not like, um, and high school, maybe the end of high school and form five, form six. But you guys, you said you're in form three? Yes. You're already discussing books. Um, you have everything planned for <laughs> yes. yourselves. So you started chess as a hobby. Yes. When we were, how old were you? Um, I think I was four. Four? Yes. Primary school? Yes. Yo, what inspired you to start to start playing chess? Well, my dad had chess on his phone and I thought it was interesting, so I just started playing from there. Do you know nobody wants to teach me how to play chess? <laughs> really? Everyone is like you should learn it by yourself. I mean, chess is kind of frustrating mm-hmm. to teach someone. Cause, yeah. So they have to figure it out <laughs> themselves. Sometimes. That's how we started playing chess. Yes. On your dad's phone. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> Who is your favorite chess player? Um, I'll say Magnus Carlsen. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he from? Um, he's from America. Yeah, uh, it's a guy. Yes. From America. Yes. And why? Why is he your favorite chess player? Um, he's young, but mm-hmm. he's really able to play really great, and like he beats almost everyone whenever he goes to Olympics. Oh, he goes to, um, to Olympics. Yes. So soon you're also gonna be going for Olympics. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you make it as well. So, what is your most memorable game or tournament that you can say, "Yeah, I created a memory. I'll never forget this one." Um, I'd say it was in Form 1. Mm-hmm. It was my first chess game in high school. And that was the first time I won a medal. And I was like, I was chuffed to see I could do so much playing with older people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ah, so when, when you're going for these um, tournaments, um, when you have big matches, do you prepare and how do you prepare for it? Um, well, I prepare by playing online because I like something that challenges me. Mm-hmm. And I do it on chess.com. I mean, sometimes I do play with my friends, but it doesn't give me the challenge I need. Then I pray after. Wait, when you say it doesn't give you the challenge you need, do you mean you're way better, like you're the best amongst your friends? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could be a friend, then I'll challenge you. I said I cannot play chess, but I, I'm sure if I learn, I'll also give you a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so understanding chess, like, it's, it's a game of um, probably strategies, using strategies and knowing what you want to do. Do you use strategies and what are the strategies that you can use for you in playing chess? Um, when playing chess, mm-hmm. I usually use E4 or E5 when I'm playing, like, long games. Mm-hmm. But then when I'm playing Blitz, which is when, you know, it's five minutes or below for a game, mm-hmm. I use the strategy to waste my opponent's time or if lucky, I'll do a checkmate. Which one is the most effective one? I would say E4 and E5. E4 and E5. Yes. I just hear people say checkmate. I don't know what the... Ah, you, 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 checkmate. Checkmate. <laughs> checkmate. Hey, hey, hey. You chase people. So can you share a time when you made a surprising move that turned the game around? Um, I think it was when I was in Namibia. Mm-hmm. So the game was looking like I would lose. Mm-hmm. But I think it was because he didn't see what I was going to play. And then I ate his queen. And I was playing with this little boy who had beat almost everyone. So I thought, oh no, I might lose this game. Mm-hmm. But in the end, yeah, I was able to conquer it. So it's the E4, E5. 
that you were using? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I was using um the blitz strategy. The blitz, yes, yeah, and it's a memorable one, I'm sure. Yes. So, how do you handle the pressure? Um, during I, a match, I calm myself down and just do a little prayer because mm-hmm. you know, yeah. It may look bad, but if I just sit down, close my eyes, and I just do a little prayer, just asking God that, you know what, whatever happens, happens, but at least help me try my best to give them a hard time. Uka muka usa skip a prayer. Do you know that face? <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you listen to only 10. And it's like, uka muka usa skip a prayer. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so it shows how much like um, you pray about everything whenever you're playing chess. You know, you just make sure that you pray. So what do you think is the most important skill for a chess player? Like, this is not just a game for everybody. It's a yeah. game of skills and strategies. Yes. What do you think is the most important skill? I think it's patience. I'm not patient. <laughs> because no, I'm, I know I'm wondering if I can be a chess player. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you can see a good move, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not the best move. So you need to just stop and analyze the whole board and... Needs a lot of patience. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering. I told you I want to be a chess player, but I'm not patient. Do you know why I'm not patient? <laughs> I told you I'm a deputy parent. My siblings took away the patience. <laughs> you get to open, you're like, no, no, no. I'm not patient enough anymore. Yeah. So you were in, in Namibia for the tournament. Yes. How was it? Take us through the process, maybe till the end. Okay, um, so when we're going to Namibia, mm-hmm. we first passed through Victoria Falls on our way connecting flights oh yes so when we got to namibia on the first day it was the first day for the tournament and we're playing teams is in we play as a team Mm -hmm. that if one person loses it's the whole team that yes so um i was playing with my teammates and we're playing as three you guys are from zimbabwe yes yes um so as we're playing um i did well I got five out of seven games, Mm -hmm. but then my teammates did otherwise. So of course it put us down and we're fourth overall. And so, yeah, but then on the second day, it was the second day of the tournament. Mm -hmm. We're doing individual games and I got five out of seven again and I got a silver medal in the end. How about your teammates? My teammates, they, they tried tried yes yeah so yeah um, after that it was the end of the tournament mm-hmm. and we spent the rest of our days in Swakom in Namibia mm-hmm. and we went to the dunes where we did um where we went to see the dunes at June 7 yes and then after that we went to the coast where we went on a boat ride and we saw seals it was, it, it was in between the days that you guys were there for the tournaments. So you're actually doing your own tourism, whatever, whatever. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, they would bring like seals onto the boat mm-hmm. and pelicans and all that stuff. And we also tried clams. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And then after that, we, when we were coming back, we passed through Victoria Falls again, but we spent a day there. And we went to the falls just to see how it is and all that stuff. Then we came back to them. That was it. Yes. It's not just chess. It's also about exploring the different the different different places, like what you're doing in Namibia, where you're going to the coast, going wherever. And it's something that interests me as well. Yes. So I, I I'm I'm still I'm still wondering what I'm gonna do because of my patience, lack of patience. Yes. But I want to be in chess just like yourself. So what other hobbies or interests do you have uh, besides chess? Well, I like reading novels or singing or dancing. What's your favorite novel that you've read before? Um, it's a trilogy mm-hmm. called Once a Broken Heart by Stephanie Kaba. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice book. That's your favorite? Yes. I also read books, but I'm not really into fiction. So oh. maybe I should... Actually, because a chess player, 
a chess player, a, very, a guru in chess is reading novels. <laughs> yes. I think I should also try to read novels <laughs> as well because I'm usually somebody who is into books, but not really the fiction way. But I think I should also try that one. Yes. So you are still in school at Loma Gandhi. Yes. How do you balance your schoolwork and your chess? Well, chess doesn't really take much of my time. It's one hour a day, excluding weekends. And so it's like... I'm able to manage it since there's a time for clubs. And so I do chess during club time. So you only do chess during, during club time? Yes. Then you're done? Yes. And at home? I know you play chess at home. Yes. Because it started in your death one. <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot be telling me that you don't play chess at home. Oh, I do. Then you make sure that you do your schoolwork. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you guys. Some of us were forced forced to do sports <laughs> we just did not want to do sports at all but you're actually getting time to do chess and play basketball and swimming we're getting to that yeah. so if you could travel anywhere in the world to anywhere in the in the world actually yes. where would it be and why um i say in italy italy have you ever been there no mm -hmm. and why italy because um First, I want to try the gelato there. Oh, <laughs> in Italy. Yes. <laughs> yes. And maybe go to Rome and see the Pope. Hey, hey. Are you Catholic? No. Just want to see the Pope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what is something that you, that you knew people, um, that you wish people knew about chess? Um, I wish people knew that even if you win, like at practice mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that doesn't guarantee you're the best and you win in tournaments because it's a mind game. I think that applies to everything as well. Because, you know, even in sports, you may be practicing and being the best, but when you get to the real game, you're like, oh my goodness, is this me? Yeah. Like, what has changed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I understand. I understand you on that. So what are your future goals in chess? Did you have, and do you have any dreams? that you can say, this is my dream in chess and this is my goal or now I'm going to attain this dream? Um, maybe to go play in the Olympics one day, mm -hmm. like for Zimbabwe, and then meet Magnus Carlsen. Hey, that yeah. one really inspires you. <laughs> yes. So you want to go for the Olympics? Yes. What if you get to play with him? Do you think you will win? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, Maybe I will, but at the moment, it looks like he's really, yeah. He's really the cool. Yes. He's the man of the moment. Yes. Okay. So what advice would you give to someone just starting to learn chess? Um, I'd give like him. Like myself. <laughs> <laughs> just to, to be determined and patient because mm -hmm. chess is not something easy to go through. Doesn't mean... If you start chess in a month, you'll be already knowing everything. No, it's like five years to know everything, the pieces, the strategies. And it's like learning because mm -hmm. there's even books you need to learn. And yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get back to chess. Now let's go to swimming because <laughs> you do a lot. You're multi-talented. Let's go to swimming right now. How did it start? Um, swimming started well. I thought to myself, mm -hmm. if I ever was pushed into the water, I don't want to drown. So I want to know how to swim. How old were you, baby? Um, I think I was seven. In primary school? Yes. So it, every, everything started in primary school? Yes. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Yeah, you can continue. Yes, so I thought I wanted to start swimming. And mm -hmm. it wasn't easy, especially when I was told, okay, it's now time for you to swim in the deep end. Yeah, she pushed me into and the water. You just wanted to swim so that you can save your life. <laughs> then now you're swimming in the tip. <laughs> yes. Your coach pushed you. Yes. Oh my goodness. And then she was like, if you don't swim, you drown. So, you know, that's when I started knowing, oh, I can now swim in the deep end. And yeah. And now you're a very good swimmer. Yes. You have a favorite swimmer? Uh, maybe Kirsty Coventry. Kirsty Coventry. Yes. Ah, Kirsty Coventry is a guru, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, she and why is. Kirsty, and why Kirsty? Yes. Why Kirsty? Like, why is she your favorite? Um, well, it's because, like, you know, she's able to swim so much and mm -hmm. conquer a lot, but at the same time, she means to be humble. 
Yeah, yeah, honorable, and she's a minister. Yes. I hope honorable is watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite stroke, like in swimming? I know, I know. There's the big stroke. There's the frog. Whatever, whatever. Yes, I'll say butterfly. Butterfly. Yes. Is your favorite. Yes. Okay, you like it. Why yeah. do you like it actually? Um, because I like how my body goes through the rhythm of the stroke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, when it comes to swimming, it exercise the whole body like be it your legs be it your hands like you can actually feel the muscles that i'm doing something yeah. i think that's that's one sport do you consider it a sport is it a sport yes yeah it's one sport that can exercise all the body parts at the same time yeah okay i understand so do you have a do you have a favorite swimming memory or an achievement Oh yes. Um I'd say last year mm-hmm. when we had inter our swimming and I won the victories ladorium. The victories? Yes. Uh, the victories ladorium. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, I I got it now. That was uh we were, we were still in form 2. Yes. So how do you prepare like for a big swimming match? Um we just do the normal swimming routine. Mm-hmm. But we more in practice on our diving and touching the wall. So, yeah, that's what we usually do. At least I can also swim. <laughs> <laughs> not just to save my life, but I know I can swim. I'm, I'm good in swimming, but obviously not as good as you. You're a genius kid. <laughs> I don't think I'm a genius just like yourself. <laughs> so, what is the most challenging part of swimming? I think it's the long and tiring sessions. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> yeah. Cuz you know you're using your whole body mm-hmm. and it's like an hour of swimming. It's really tiring. So you told me about your dreams in chess that you want to go for the Olympics one day. So in swimming do you have any? Yes. Um maybe go to the Olympics one day as well. Yes. In swimming. Just yeah. for fun. <laughs> okay. You wanna go to, you wanna go for the Olympics all by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how do you get to balance like the swimming, the chess and other school activities as well? Um swimming is an hour mm-hmm. and so I am after volleyball at school, there's swimming, so it's kinda of compulsory for us who can swim. So I just go for swimming during that time. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it is on the weekends, but doesn't take our time since it's like rest time when they call us for swimming. So you also do volleyball? Yes. Is it? It's compulsory. That's why you do volleyball. So you play volleyball, swimming, chess, basketball. Yes. What other activities do you do? Um, I do poetry. Hey, we'll get to that. Let's <laughs> talk about swimming. <laughs> yes. We'll get to the poetry part of it. How yes. do you, what do you enjoy most about being part of a swimming team? I enjoy like when we're going for swimming galas. Mm-hmm. I enjoy how we like have fun together in the bus and like it's swimming is like no pressure because you have your friends and you're mm-hmm. talking and you're having fun. Yeah, I like that about swimming. Like we're all together and united. Hey, I understand. Have you ever tried open water swimming? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I would like to, but at the moment, mm-hmm. I don't look for really clean water before I just... <laughs> <laughs> I, understand the, I understand the clean water part. Yes. But just, just risking it. Just trying something. <laughs> yes. So how do you relax? Like, what's your favorite way to relax um, after a, a tough swim practice? I like to sleep because it rests. I relax all my muscles mm-hmm. if I sleep and do a little stretch. Yes. So do you have tips for somebody who is just uh, trying to swim? Like we have starting. Um, just to not fear the water because um, as much as the water looks gay sometimes, it's easy to swim if you know that you won't the water won't kill you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you who's going to kill yourself with the fear of water. Exactly. Yeah. Because it all begins in the mind. Yes. So as, as long as you tell your mind that, I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely dying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we're in the water. So now let's go to school. Yes. You're a student yeah, yeah. at Loma Ganti and Form 3. So do you have a favorite subject? Yes. What's your favorite subject? Biology. Why biology? 
Hey, <laughs> science people. Yes, you're a science student. Now you're in sport. Everything. Like you're a genius for you. You just do everything. Why biology? Um, because I like how biology, there's more to life than we just see. Mm-hmm. Like, I never knew there were atoms in everything, but like it opens your eyes to see there's more to everything around you. You just reminded me of this video that I watched recently on TikTok. So the, it was a street quiz and somebody was asking, what's um, the smallest the smallest thing in the world, but not one not? <laughs> then I'm like, I'm, I was busy cracking my head. Then the person went like, atom. Then the, then the, then the, um, the presenter was like, no, it's not an atom. You are close by. I'm like, what? There's, nothing, <laughs> there's something smaller than an atom. <laughs> and it's like, it's called a quack. What not? One not. So you oh. biology people, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you have a, do you have a favorite biologist or, sci- or a scientist? No, not really. You just like biology yes. as a subject. What yes. do you want to do, like after doing biology, when you are later maybe in tertiary? Um, to become a neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeon. Yes. What does a neurosurgeon do? Like they work with the brain. Mm-hmm. So like, they're the surgeon. But then for the brain. Oh, for the brain. Yes. Hey, my guy, you are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any interesting experiment that you've done before that you can say in biology? This is the most interesting experiment. Um, yes, I think it was when we're looking at the plant using a microscope mm-hmm. and, you know, testing the plant for starch and stuff like that. I think, yeah, the plant part. Oh, the test for starch one. Yes. Yeah, that one I think everyone knows about it. <laughs> even even us who are not biologi- biologists yes. in science, you know, when you do that stuff. I don't even remember because, you know, I'm I'm just not a science person. <laughs> yes. So if you could discover a new species, what kind of uh, organism would it be? An antiopod. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is, this is not a bit of geniuses. I told you I'm not a genius. <laughs> just, just keep it simple for me, please. <laughs> Say the what? An antiopod. Antropod. Yes. Eh, 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 eh. What's that? Um, it's like the spiders and millipedes, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's in that group, those species. Yeah, now I know. I've I have a bit of an idea. So how do you think biology will change uh will change in the next ten years? Um, I think there'll be like new discoveries mm-hmm. of like new species and those that are said to be extinct. Mm-hmm won't be extinct because how is an animal extinct? I think they'll find the animals. Like the one you're telling me about, like, and eh, I think, <laughs> I think I'll, I'll, I'll need to write that down. <laughs> and yeah, between my dad, I'm like, guys, I learned this new word on the show and it's like a species and whatnot, what not, because I'd, I'd, I don't even know if I should call you a chess guru, a biologist, a student, a swimmer, a basketball player. Hey, <laughs> yes. you just do a lot. So what's your favorite topic in biology? Um, I'll say human anatomy. Human anatomy. Yes. Yeah, that's when you get to discover all the parts of the human body, even the hidden ones. Yes. Why? Why? Why that? Why that topic? I feel like I want to know more on like why mm-hmm. the body functions this way and why this is there in mm-hmm. the body. Yeah, I want to know everything you want to know you want to know everything but at the same time you also want to work with the brain because you talked about being a neurosurgeon and working with the brain i understood yeah. you because you know a lot of people want to discover actually the brain works like how people get to think yes. i also want to discover that but i'm not a scientist so you do that for me yes. <laughs> so you, you you definitely have thought about a career in biology which is um a, being a neurosurgeon you said yes. a neurosurgeon so what do you think is the most important biological discovery in recent years um, I'll say the vaccine for coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because um, with the way coronavirus just mm-hmm. came out of nowhere and it was so strong and mm-hmm. t- it left a huge impact. It did. And the fact that they were able to find a vaccine, I think that's really, that's really big. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes. And how do you think we can use biology to solve uh, the world's most pressing challenges? Um, I think if we're able to like find vaccines for like these mm-hmm. small diseases like HIV and AIDS, I think it, it'll, it'll help mm-hmm. everything and maybe even to treat water everywhere. 
Yeah. I understand because um, the issue mentioned about coronavirus, like coming up with that vaccine, that was just biology at its peak. Yes. I th- I'm sure it served more people um, than what could have been done if the vaccine wasn't there. Yes. So if you could visit any place in the world, you talked about visiting Italy, just yes. visiting Italy. So if, if you could visit any place in the world to start biology, where, we, where would you go and why? Um, to study like the biology. places biology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I would go to Mukurisi Woodlands. Mukurisi? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Wait, this is interesting. <laughs> because like, you know how it is a river? Mm-hmm. And like it's so polluted and all. Mm-hmm. And see how the inhabitants there, how they're coping and how everything's just going on there now. And if it's like different to like everywhere else in the world because of the circumstances there. Hey, my guy. <laughs> how are you going to balance all this? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about you balancing um, school with your activities because, you know, at school you have time allocated for different activities, be it chess, be it uh, volleyball, swimming and whatnot, whatnot. Yes. Now you want to do all these discoveries. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. You want to go to Mkwivisi Woodlands and actually get to understand the biology of the place, like how um, the people, I don't know, the animals, they <laughs> actually get to survive. So, hey, I, I regret not, not bringing my diary because I could be taking notes right now. <laughs> you could be the one who's just doing me and I'll be taking notes like, hey, yes. neurosurgeon. You, you, know, you know what? You're giving me confusion right now because I know I'm thinking whether I should, whether I should divert from my career. And also venture into biology, as well as assuming I told you I'm already a good swimmer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a yes for yes for me. Then chess. Hey, yeah, you are indeed a genius. So this is the genius kids, and about to take a short break. Uh, stay tuned. Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and and your family buy groceries pay school fees renew your insurance pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone and you're guaranteed access to usd cash from any registered eco cash outlet nationwide tell your family in the diaspora to send money with sasai money transfer today let's fight the el nino induced drought together eco cash live life the eco cash way Welcome back. This is the Genius Kids, and today in the studio we have Joyce Ndemera, who is a multi-talented genius. She is indeed a genius. She, has, uh, she went to Namibia, and she's a chess guru, and she did very well in chess. She's also a swimmer, a basketball player, a biologist, and anything. She's indeed a genius. Welcome back to the show, Joyce. Thank you. Hi. I'm just fascinated by everything. <laughs> so talking about your neurosurgeon, you said you want to be a neurosurgeon. Yes. What inspired that? Um, it was a book I read. Mm-hmm. Um, so the book was all about someone who had like mental issues mm. and a psychiatrist was like going through how this person went on their days. And I don't know like why this person did all these things and what happened to the brain. Mm. Yeah. That is what sparked your passion in that? Yes. So do you have anyone who can say this is my favorite neurosurgeon or maybe a, uh, a medical specialist? Um, I think Ben Max from USA. Mm-hmm. He's one of the top neurosurgeons. He's actually the top neurosurgeon at I think, this I think moment. I know that one. Does he write books? The I'm not sure. Is, is the other one is Ben? Is Ben Carson something something? That one is also a neurosurgeon. You should look him up. Like uh, he wrote this book called um, "Think Big." Think big. Yeah, when he yes. talked about neurosurgeon, some point, some at some point in the book. So you also yes. have to to go through it. I'm sure it will assist you as well. Yes. So are there any specific medical schools or universities that you can say I'm interested in attending? 
Probably Harvard. Hey, hey, my guy. <laughs> so Harvard is for the geniuses. Yes. Where will some of us go? <laughs> Because you're going for the Olympics. And now you'll be at Harvard <laughs> studying um, neurosurgery. Is it neurosurgery when you're studying it? Uh-uh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> Not getting it right. Yes. So what do you think would be the most challenging part in being a neurosurgeon? I think the number of years in university. How many? Twelve. Ah, 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 ah. Twelve years. Yes. Starting to be, to be a medical specialist. Yes. Hey. So you're gonna be at Harvard for twelve years. <laughs> hey, my guy. Yeah. This is amazing. So, do you have any favorite medical TV show that you can say you've watched before? Do you watch these shows actually? No, I'm more of a book person. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I was told there's a TV show called Good Doctor, and I might try it one day. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like I said, you do a lot. Now let's get into basketball. Yes. You're in the national team. Yes. When you say the national team, you mean the Zimbabwean team. Yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> How did you get there? Um, so we started with MCD trials, mm-hmm. which we did at Watershed. And then they chose the MCD team, which is the Midlands Central District, mm-hmm. like for our district. Yes. Then after that, we went to nationals where those were chosen for MCD. We played with other districts like Blawayo, Harare, and then from there, um, we were chosen. And you made it. Yes. How many of you guys are in the team? Um, I think we are forty-seven. Forty-seven. Yes, I think so. Hey, you just I I don't know. How did you even get to be interested in basketball? Um, it started in form one. Mm. It was compulsory, so <laughs> I had no choice but to do it, and I ended up liking it. Yes. Do you have any memory that you can say this is the earliest memory of me playing basketball? Yes. And um, you were still being forced, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was in form one. It was our first basketball game. It was like. I wasn't chosen to play that much that day mm-hmm. and I was like you know what um I'm going to work harder so that they'll see that I can play and I'll be chosen to play more. Yes. Then you started liking it. Yes. And you're like this is my memory in basketball. Yes. This is just amazing. Uh you have an inspiration in chess, you also have an is an you have an inspiration in neurosurgeon. Uh, do you have one in basketball? In basketball. Mm-hmm. Maybe to play in the Olympics. And to play in the in the Olympics. Yes. Who's your favorite basketball player? Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Yes. Caitlin Clark. Yes. Hey. Okay. Well, then why? <laughs> um, at this point of time, she's one of the best shooters yeah. in the Olympics, and I thought that was really cool, and I really want to be able to do that too. Hey. For you, everything Olympics, Olympics. <laughs> Olympics. Yes. I wish I could go with you for the Olympics at some point. <laughs> Maybe to just support support you when yes. you go for the Olympics. I don't know if you go for like when am I even coming with you when you go for swimming or basketball or <laughs> chess or a. Hey, of course, there's no biology in Olympics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'll definitely support you whenever I can. So yes. uh, how do you practice? Like, do you have a daily routine? That you follow me um, with your, all your, t- your activities. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Um, What's it like? So for basketball, we do a lot of running first. Yeah, basketball <laughs> and running, they are best friends. <laughs> yes. So we start with a lot of running. Then after that, we do shooting drills. Mm-hmm. And if lucky, we get to play games like just us as the team or with other age groups. Do you do this at school or even at the national team? Um, we do this at school and at the national team as well. Yes. So, what's your favorite drill or exercise in basketball? Are you a three pointer person? I not not the three pointer one. Like, what's your favorite drill? <laughs> it is the three pointer. The three pointer. <laughs> yeah, I got to try. Was I not everybody like when people score that three pointer? They'll be like, yes, <laughs> this is me. Yeah. So, how do you how do you prepare mentally for a big uh, match? Well, I just think of of myself playing. Mm-hmm. like in the game and i just pray and ask god to help me to play are you also a good shooter 
Yes. Well, hey. three pointers, yes. Three, four, three pointers. <laughs> yes. What's been your favorite memory so far? Um, Maybe the match that you're like, ah, this was my best. Um, MCD trials. Oh, the MCD trials when you then made it into the national team. Yes. Hi. <laughs> three pointers. <laughs> so if, if, if you shoot like on the three pointer, you get three points. Yes. Because in basketball, it's usually two points. Yes. So now when you hit the three pointer, it's, three point, it's two points. It's, it's three. Yes. Ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, how do you handle pressure like during uh, the important matches? Like when you were uh, doing the trials for the MCDs, how oh. did you handle the pressure? Um, if I feel like the pressure is too much, I'll ask to like go sit down mm-hmm. and calm myself down so that I don't make many mistakes on the court. Where did you learn all this? You're talking about calming down. I go and sit down. Who taught you that? <laughs> I feel like calming down is just something mm-hmm. that's helpful. So that you don't make mistakes or do something you regret, like you think about it. Hey, so when you're pissed with your siblings, do you also calm down? Yeah. <laughs> I try. <laughs> you're like, ah, kids. <laughs> then you're going to be like, let me calm myself down. <laughs> yes. What's, what's the biggest challenge that you've faced so far in the court? Um, I think it's being pushed and getting hurt on the court. Oh, yeah, in yeah. basketball, that happens a lot. Yeah. Like basketball is different from other sports because yo guys the violence <laughs> is just too much. <laughs> like people are really violent; they really want it, you know. Yeah. They can just do anything. So, how did you recover from that? Um, I mean, there's no way of recovering mm-hmm. from that. But I guess I'm going to get shin pads so that if I'm pushed, I have something mm, to protect you. Yes. Okay. What's your favorite um, uh, thing about being part of a team in basketball? Um, I think I like how much fun we have, especially if we win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we talk to each other and like like during the game, you're having so much fun because, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just you, but you have teammates who are with you and you're encouraging each other. Yeah, but with that as well, like uh, we, being in a team, uh, there comes a lot of conflicts and disagreements. How yeah. do you handle that? Um, well, during the game, we don't talk about it. But after, like someone can come and say, oh, yeah, this and that. I think we need to fix it. It was wrong. And we try iron it out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like um, amongst your team members, who do you look up to? Um, after I got into first team, mm-hmm. I think I'll say Panashe Maswera. Oh, she's in the first team. Yes. She's the captain? Yes. Oh, of course. Why not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you have any basketball goals for the next maybe? Um, let's see if I hear. It's to remain in the, in the national team. Yeah. And I know you'd want to go for the Olympics as well. Yes. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> so in basketball, do you have any skills that you can say you're working on improving? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Like shooting from close up. And layups. Yeah, the layup. Yeah. So yeah, a three point and you wanna learn how to shoot close up. Yes. Because you 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 you're, you're a bit extra yeah, you're <laughs> extraordinary actually. So you wanna try how to do it. Hey, hey, hey. How to shoot like close up then <laughs> two points. Yes. Okay. That's a good goal as well. Yeah. How do you balance the basketball with other school activities? Um, like I said, um, at our school, mm. there's like times. And so it's easy for us to say it's one hour mm-hmm. of basketball. And it's just in second term where we play basketball. So it's not that hard to manage. Yes. We have talked about uh, chess. We have talked about swimming, academics, basketball. Yeah. You mentioned something in the beginning about poetry. Yeah. You are into poetry. Yes. Can you just tell me something about yourself in poetry? Like as a <laughs> poet, your achievements, anything that you have done before in poetry? All right. So poetry started when there was a little competition at school mm-hmm. um, where we're turning 40, like the school. Mm-hmm. And at first I took it as like, oh, let me just do this for fun and all. But then I ended up seeing, oh, I won the competition and all. And I was like, oh. Poetry is actually fun to do. Mm-hmm. And from there, I just started writing more and more on poetry. And where do you perform at school? Um, Sometimes, yes. Then sometimes? <laughs> sometimes I just do it alone. You do it alone? Yes. Like what's been your biggest achievement in poetry? 
think it was that time at school mm-hmm. when we had the competition and it was like I didn't know I was going to get it because I'd done it more of I'm just doing this yes. for fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that's the time. And you got the prize? Yes. I <laughs> my <laughs> No, I don't know what I'm going to copy from you. <laughs> because it seems I want to copy everything. So you started doing it for fun. Now now it's something that you really enjoy doing. Yes. How do you come up with the ideas? I think it's strong emotions that I feel. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, instead of fainting out, I just write it on paper. It's poetry. That's a good one. Yeah. So do you keep like a journal or a notebook? For yes. The poems? Yes, but online. But like, online. Yeah. Or you don't have a physical one. Yes. Okay. That's great. I understand that. Are there any books or resources uh, that have helped you improve your poetry skills? Um, I'll say just reading different random books. Mm-hmm. Like you just pick up words and phrases that when you're writing your poetry, you just think about them mm-hmm. and you write it down. That's interesting. You talked about emotions at some point. You're like, um, I'm inspired by my emotions. I just have to put them down on paper. Yeah. So what emotions or experiences do you find easiest to express through poetry? I feel like sadness. Sadness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier because, you know, I feel like anger is it's like something much more stronger mm-hmm. when it comes to emotions. And so it's easier to write down. You are really multi-talented. You do a lot. Yes. Uh, what words of, words of advice like um, would you give uh, to somebody who is as talented as you are or who is not as talented as you are would want to be where you are? Um, I'll say um, to achieve, sometimes you need to work really hard and give up some things you love so that you get to where you want to get. And it's not easy mm-hmm. and it's not something that happens overnight. But if you're determined, you will get there. What can you say to me who wants to be a chess player but is not patient? <laughs> <laughs> I can just say, um, if you just try, uh-huh. you, can, you can get there. Yeah. Try, try, try again. Yes. In kindergarten, did you, did you get to sing that song? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think, I guess I, I guess I just have to try because... I think I'm really interested in chess, but when you mentioned about patience, you know, I've been thinking yeah. I can really do it, but I'm just going to try it. Yes. Thank you very much, very much, Joyce, for joining me today. This was lovely having a conversation with you. Like, Tim is very jealous and you know, <laughs> we just have to end the show, but it yes. was really fun having you because you're really multi-talented. You do a lot. And I'm just wondering, the way we grew up, is it the same way that you guys are also growing up? Because <laughs> the activities that you do, some of us were forced to do sports. And yeah. we, di- we didn't like doing sports. We then started liking doing sports at a later stage. But yo, you know when you're being forced? I was by watershed, <laughs> by, by the way. So in watershed, oh. they force you to do sports like crazy. You're like, you have to do them. In the morning, you have to wake up and go for the morning jog. Yeah. But for you, it seems something that, that is in you, something that you really like. Yes. Thank you very much for the for joining us. That was our multi-talented genius, Joyce Ndemera. The, and we wish you all the best. The Genius Kids show continues to give you the best. Remember, this show is inclusive of everybody that you know who is extraordinary in any, any way, be it in sports, be it in academics, robotics, arts and crafts. The list is just endless. Genius Kids is, is the show where you ought to be. Keep hydrated, guys. Like I said in the beginning of this show, it is getting hotter and hotter. My name is Benny. See you next time. Every 
dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino induced drought together. EcoCash, live life the EcoCash way. It's the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.